Welcome everybody. Uh, we're here to introduce Mikhail Bridges. We're going to start off with an opening statement and then we'll continue with questions. Uh, cool. Um, I don't know much to say. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Uh, excited to be at Nick. You know, excited to play MSG. Um, excited to see my guy Spike courtside. Um, I don't know. Just you know, just great to be here. You know, obviously, just the team we have and um, Tibbs and everybody. Um, you know, I want to thank a lot of people. Thank Leon. Thank my agent Sam and Jordan. Um, you know, thanks to the Nets organization, everybody. Um, you know, they've been great since I've been there. So, um, you know, just really appreciative and you know excited to get to work. I hate that it's the summer because you got to wait, you know, a long time to play. But um, I'm really excited. What was your reaction when you heard the news? And, and tell me a little about your, your new teammates and what you think of them. Yeah, um, man, I was I was actually not – usually I'm home. I don't travel that much, but I was traveling. And um, just crazy when it happened, you know. I just – it was just it was just wild, you know. You're just not thinking that was going to happen. And, you know, it was, it was just a crazy moment. It was really crazy. And teammates, I mean, you know, everybody's great. You know, got relationships with a lot of people, obviously, outside of Manova guys, you know, OG, you know, I was excited, you know, when they signed him back, you know, I've always been a big fan of OG, and I think I've, you know, said a lot of things about him, you know, when I was in Phoenix and Brooklyn as well, so, you know, I got a lot of players, Julius, everybody, so I'm excited. Steve Papa from Houston. Besides the teammates that you obviously know, Thibodeau would seem to be a good match for you. A guy plays every day, plays defense, you know, all defensive team. Do you, have you thought about that and talked with him yet about your role and how you fit in with him? Yeah, I mean, I think I just, you know, looking at the team last year and stuff, just I think I fit in really well, you know, just, you know, obviously you got, you know, two all-team guys, you know, with, with JB and Julius. So, you know, how I play basketball, just good brand of basketball. I know how to, you know, make winning plays, play the right way. So, you know, I think I fit in pretty well. What's up, Mikhail? Long time no see. Yeah, um, I am. Saw your post, obviously, bittersweet, and then start ending in Brooklyn, starting there. Can you just talk about the emotions of closing that chapter and starting a new one? Yeah, it's tough, man. I think it's, you know, I feel like it's my third team now, and, you know, just wherever I go, I always feel like I build, you know, pretty good relationships, and, you know, it's never it's never easy to go, you know, and um, it was tough. You know, I got a lot of relationships that I've built over there. Um, you know, my teammates, you know, the organization, everybody, you know, the staff, like, you know, a year and a half I was there, and, you know, I just, you know, me, I talk to everybody, so it's going to be pretty close to everybody, but um, it's sad, man. I just, I'm going to miss everybody, you know, but I'm still in the East, so I, I guess I get to see them four times, so. Mikhail, uh, Fred Katz from The Athletic. Uh, you had different roles in your career, like Phoenix, you're more straight 3 and D. Brooklyn, you take on more of the burden offensively. This seems to be provide kind of an in between sort of sort of area for you. Yep. How, how schematically you look on the court? How do you see yourself kind of filling in those gaps and taking parts from from both of your past in order to contribute? Yeah, man. I think I think it's not going. I, I think it's not going to be that hard. Honestly, I think it's just you know knowing just the brand. You know, to play here, just playing the right way. It's just this who I am. It's like a natural thing, you know. So. It's kind of going to USA, kind of the same thing where, you know, obviously in USA playing last year, the role is going to change. And um, just being ready, I adapt, you know, you know, pretty fast. And listen, I just want to win. And I know the things I got to do, you know, to help me you know, win. And so I'm excited. We have John Chandler from NBC here. You know, um, what, from your experience in Brooklyn, what did you learn about yourself as a player that you think can translate here to New York? Yeah. Um, Man, I think just just ability, you know, having the ball a lot, and obviously, I didn't play to how I wanted to play, and um, just learning from it. I think you know, last year was a big learning thing, and obviously, like I said, I didn't play as well as I wanted to, but you know, seeing a lot of things and being going through that kind of helps me. You know, you kind of you kind of learn and build from the mistakes and all the other things that was going on with coming off and you know maybe bringing two guys and stuff like that, but. I don't know, man. I think you just, I just learned from it. I think I just kind of, you know, this is, when stuff doesn't go as well as you want it, you know, you can't just, you know, look at it, be upset and, you know, put your head down. I think you just kind of got to look at it, 
and accept what it was and, and learn how to grow from it. You know, I think that's the biggest thing when adversity hits, you gotta you gotta use it, you know, you gotta use it as fuel, use it, you know, as a, a learning experience and um I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm saying the right thing. My mom's on her head every time. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to clap. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of on that note. Um, what what did I mean? Because you wrote in the um, Instagram post that some of the way you played is going to stick with you for a while. I mean, what what went wrong in Brooklyn last season, in your estimation? Um, I don't know, man. I think we just this is a tough year for everybody. I think we just. You know, see, we didn't do what we were supposed to do. That's just on all of us. But um, like I said, I could have been better. Definitely could have been better. But you know, just something you got to learn from. And w- I'm sorry, one more. The um, the the idea that you, getting you an OG has been pushed out there as a way to combat what the Celtics have with Tatum and Brown. How do you think you guys stack up against, I guess, the Celtics and in, in the East now at large? Um, this man, I haven't probably been in this building for about. 40 minutes, so I just, I still gotta get to know everybody and stuff like that, but it's a day-to-day process, you know, obviously there's a lot of great teams all over, but we kind of just gotta figure out what we gotta do together, you know, as a team and stuff, so. Yeah, Ian Begley, SNY, just wondering from afar, Jalen Jalen Brunson and his rise over the past couple years, what have you thought of that, and also what do you think about now, teaming up with him? Um, Yeah, I mean, JB is just who he is. I think um, when he first came here and signed here and everybody, you know, saw his contract and everything, and I think a lot of people didn't understand who he was, and I actually kind of tweeted about it, like, you know, must I know who he is, you know, I know how much he works, I know how crazy his father is, um, so, um, so I know, I, I just know, I know what he's capable of, and um, so that was kind of simple for me, but yeah, you know, obviously, just JB in general, it just... You know, building over the years, you know, playing in college and stuff, it's just, it's kind of like second nature, you know, playing basketball with him. He plays the right way, you know, kind of know how to play off of him. So, you know, I'm excited to play with everybody with him and everybody else on his team. Uh, can you take us a little, you mentioned like we were traveling when, when the trade happened. Can you take us just a little bit more of just that <coughs> that moment for you? How did you find out? Where were you? What was the actual immediate reaction? Um, Yeah, so I was just, I was just visiting, you know, Dallas for a little bit, working out with, you know, Finney, Finney Smith at the time. Um, actually saw one of my close friends, Desmond, Desmond Bain, and um, I was actually with him. You know, we was chilling by his little lake house and uh, just chilling with his family and stuff. And then the news broke. It was pretty, I think it was dark outside or something, but it was crazy. You know, they... It was wild. He's just over there just screaming from far, like, yo, did you see? I'm like, this is crazy. So it was cool. And can you tell us, you don't have to say every word of it, but but Josh did tweet out the FaceTime screenshot of the four of you guys on FaceTime. Just what what is that moment? Like, this has never really happened with four guys from a college championship team all getting back together in the pros. Like, what, what is that moment like on that FaceTime for you? What, yeah. what are those vibes? I mean, it was cool. I mean, just... You know, my phone was blowing up, and I saw a call from all my, all got the number. So it was just cool, man. Everybody just geeked up. You know, Josh, of course, is going to do that and take a picture. And <laughs> <laughs> of course, I don't expect nothing less, you know, from Josh. So I knew, but you know, it was cool. I was just, I was just, obviously that's cool. But you know, excited to be a Nick man at that at that moment, and you know, looking at the roster and everybody else we had, I was just excited to you know be on this team. Look here, you guys obviously had a lot of success at, at Villanova. What can you take from that experience to have that success translated? Um, I mean, just just trying to win. You know, I think we all embody you know how to win games and you know all the sacrificing to win. So pretty much that. All right, Otis Livingston, CBS Two. Um, piggybacking off that, we've seen the success that those guys have had together here with the Knicks. Was it about that program at Villanova, or is it just the players in general that make it a success and that you can add to that this year? Yeah, yeah, the program for sure. I think just what Coach Wright does, you know, it's not just us, you know, a lot of guys in the league as well. But Colin, Jermaine, Sadiq, O'Head, Kyle, like, am I missing somebody? I probably am, but just Cam, all the guys. Like, there's just a lot of guys, and just – 
just good old basketball, just what you embody, just mental toughness and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I'm excited to be here. What's your thoughts about playing at the Garden, and do you have a message for the fans? Um, very excited to play at the Garden. Um, kind of thought I was gonna, you know, be here in 2018, but. Uh, at, at number nine, but that didn't happen. But, you know, I always loved the Garden, like I said, in college, you know, playing there against St. John's and, you know, the Big East Tournament, which I think is the best college tournament there is besides the main tournament. But I'm um, really excited. And for the fans, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I hope they're excited because I am too. I just can't wait to go out there and compete and um, just play hard for everybody. Back here, it's Tina from Fox 5. Just to continue on the, the college teammates thing, um, you know, Last year, every time you guys were would Knicks or Nets would play each other, you know, the social media would go crazy. You did the podcast, and and Josh was always the one kind of the force in the hand. What was that dynamic like, though, when you guys, when you know, the, when you would just talk to them as Knicks players? Did you ever imagine that you could continue to be reunited, especially as they added Dante last year? Like, was that ever a part of your conversation over the last season? Yeah, I mean, as you know about Josh, Josh just plays all day, you know. Twitter and posting memes and stuff, but I mean, not crazy. It's just always just catching up, and I watch all my all my friends, all my old teammates, you know, whatever team they go to, you know, watch a lot of basketball, so league pass, watch whatever. Just a little bit easier that, you know, three of them all same one team, so I can just, besides worrying about Dante who's in Golden State or, you know, Jalen Dallas, you know, Josh, you know, wherever that's so that New Orleans or whatever, but, um, but yeah, just it was just cool. It was just a cool moment. When they're teasing you and trolling you last year, do you do the math in your head that it's been forty years the Nets don't trade with the Knicks, and this is all just jokes, or did you ever think? No, I did. No, I did not think. <laughs> it's um, it's surreal, but you know, it's just dope to you know dope to be a Nick. You know, um, like I said, I thought I was gonna be here in twenty eighteen and. You know, I love everything about the team, you know, Tibbs and the crowd, MSG, all that. So, you know, it's the history. I know I think it kind of brings me back to being a lead for a while. You kind of, growing up, being older, you kind of, you know, you just, you be around a lot. I feel like now with coming here, I just, I don't know, it makes me feel like a, like, a, like a young kid again, just with all the memories. And, you know, you think, when you think basketball when I was young, and think about like the old school, like there's always the Knicks, like that's what you always think about and think about the MSG and you know the, the with the um when the guy made like the, the, the New York song, like the, the Knicks song, so just all that stuff. There were a lot of rumors, reports, whatever you want to call them, about you possibly requesting a trade from Brooklyn. Sean Marks kind of put that to bed yesterday. Just wondering if that was something that was floating around your mind. Is there any truth to that? And how were you feeling just in the days about possibly moving out from Brooklyn to the Yeah, yeah. I mean, Sean said everything. Like, you know, I kind of even try to say as much as I can when I was tweeting about things in my, my Instagram post. But no, I mean, it's just not who I am. Um, it's just not. It's just, yeah, that's, what, that's what it is. So I'm happy Sean had a chance to kind of tell everybody. But, you know, no matter what you say, they ain't going to believe it anyway. So, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I keep telling the truth, but. <laughs> so, um, just, just, so, just to clarify, just so you can tell the truth, the, so you, you didn't push to go to the Knicks or anything like that. It was mm-hmm. not anything that was that hard. Um, going back to 2018, I know they picked Kevin Knox, right? Right before you. Is that what happened? Uh, yeah, yeah. How were you, I mean, that whole proxy, did you think you were going to get chosen by the Knicks that night? Or was it before when you thought you were going to get taken by the Knicks? Yeah, no, nah, I think just, you know, I, I thought those two teams was Knicks and Philly, um, pretty much, and but Knicks was nine, so kind of at the draft, and I was like, okay, like, I'm about to go play MSG, like, it's that time, you know, I love it there, like, you know, me and my agents, you know, my mom, everybody knows, like, this is, this is, obviously, Philly was meant to be as well, but, you know, as much as I love the garden, I was like, you know, you, you just... It's just different. It's just, I don't know how it's, it's just different playing at the guard and playing for the Knicks. It just was different, and um, so I thought there was a chance. Honestly, I really, I really thought I was going, and you know, you kind of know when you're at the green room 
at the draft, you kind of know when the cameras are following you or your agents might get the call a little bit before. And they were up, and I just looked at them, and they were just like, kind of just like shook their head. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Three more. Uh, Mikel, uh, tell, me, tell me if you disagree, but I don't know if you've ever quite played with a wing defender like OG before. And in terms of that, how does, how does that going to affect you defensively? Are there things that you feel like you'll be able to do, places you'll be able to rely on, that kind of stuff that, that you and OG will be able to do together that might just not be possible? Um, other people. I just think, I mean, I think it's just, obviously it's great for the team, and, you know, I think just defensively the schemes kind of makes it easier to read a lot of things. But, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm excited. Like I told you, I was excited when OG signed that. A lot of money. I, <laughs> <my team. laughs> I always tease when I see him about that. I'm like, hey, let me hold a dollar. But, uh, yeah, just, I just know what OG brings, and Obviously, everybody else, but just talking about OG right now. But, yeah, that's my guy. And I think I've, we kind of built a relationship over the years. Um, I think just acknowledging each other and knowing you know, what we do for you know, our respective teams. Um, but, yeah, you know, you know, it's great to have him out there. We tell you obviously never missed a game. Last year you played 83 games. What, what do you make of the idea of playing for Tom? What have people told you about playing for Tom? I know. I see all the jokes. <laughs> I see it all. But, um, I mean, it's great. I know Tim's a great coach. And, I think, I mean, one thing, like, who doesn't want to play? You know, who doesn't want to play all the time? And um, just who he is, just how he embodies and how structured he is. And, you know, that's where I came from. That's high school, college, you know, with Coach Monty as well. Just those guys, you know, I just, that's just, you know, I, I you know, I fit for that. And, um, yeah, I know everybody say all them jokes about Tibbs and stuff. But I'm like, y'all must not have been watching me at Phoenix because Coach Monty will play me. 48 minutes and the man played me 50 some minutes against Darren Fox in Sacramento and y'all know how fast they play and I was sick so I was sick as a bat literally out there couldn't breathe and I'm playing 50 some minutes I was on the freaking chair after we won like laid out and I don't think Monty knew I was sick either but he was just like oh look look at him that's what we do and I'm like I'm like let's just get on this damn plane please alright last one guys um Hey, I, I want, my name is Chris Herring from ESPN. I wanted to ask you two things. One, I know Steve asked a little bit about the trolling, but I wanted to ask one, how did you feel watching your college teammates kind of have so much success last year and kind of have the city so alive last year when you guys were struggling in Brooklyn and now what it's like to come over? And two, you were, you were referencing, obviously, OG, you're like, it's a lot of money when you hold a dollar. Uh, the team obviously gave up quite a bit to get you and, you know, you might not know right now where you stack up with Boston, but I think a lot of people will view you as kind of the finishing piece. So kind of what are your thoughts about that and just how much the team wanted to get you? Uh, first part. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I could restate them too. Yeah, so good. Um, say the first part again. <laughs> about just obviously the amount of success the Knicks oh, had yeah, last yeah. year relative um, to Brooklyn. I mean, happy for those guys, but I wasn't room for them. Like, Happy for them, you know, they stay injury-free, you know, they play well, but I wasn't, I wasn't really rooting for them that much, man. I, I don't need them to, as you can see on the podcast, like, I don't need them to always have an edge on me. Like, I just don't need them. And, you know, they just, they play all day, they play much. But, um, what I saw, you said about the boss thing, um, yeah, I mean, honestly, just worried about us right now. That's the biggest thing. You can't really... You know, worry about other teams. You kind of got to, you know, starts in here and starts with everybody in the locker room, the coach staff, you know, medical staff, everybody. So kind of got to, like I said, only been here for about 40 minutes. Just got to, you know, build here and, you know, go from there. Thanks, guys.